In this session, I'll explain the standing or ranking of three persons in the house of God, a believer, a maintenance worker of the Forbidden Mosque, and Prophet Ibrahim a.s. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Atif Dost. Today is 27th November 2022 and 3rd Jamadul Awwal 1444. The title is Cracking the Kaaba Code, Prophet Ibrahim a.s. and the Kaaba. The reason it is important to understand their ranking and standing is because historically speaking, scholars tell us that Ibrahim built the Kaaba brick by brick. This makes him a bricklayer, mason, mystery, like a maintenance person. In my previous presentation, we established that Ibrahim was asked or tasked to clean up the house for the people who were already performing the rituals, that is orbiting the Kaaba, standing, bowing, and prostrating. This makes him a cleaner also, another responsibility of a maintenance worker. Now this raised a question, is it appropriate for a prophet to first build and then keep on cleaning the house for the people? rather than people cleaning up the house for him. Therefore, I'll cover the dot point number three of the session roadmap. What is the ranking of a maintenance person and a believer? Chapter 9, at tawbah verse 19 and 20. Aja'altum siqayat al وعمارات المسجد الحرام كمن آمن بالله واليوم الآخر وجاهد في سبيل الله لا يستوون عند الله والله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين Do you make those giving water to the pilgrims and maintaining the forbidden mosque same as believing in Allah in the last day and striving in Allah's way? The two are not equal near Allah, and Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. So which option is easier? Just saying I believe in Allah in the last day, or maintaining the forbidden mosque, like constructing or reconstructing the Kaaba, repairing it, cleaning it, and giving water to the pilgrims. Of course, it's easier to say I believe if it's just about saying it. Therefore, Allah explains further. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَهَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ أَعْزَمُ دَرَجَةً إِنَّ اللَّهِ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ those who believe and immigrate and strive in the way of Allah with their wealth and their selves are far greater in rank near Allah. And it is they who will triumph. These people spend their wealth and commit themselves for a struggle to change themselves or immigrate from the system they were born in to believing in Allah. Refer to the footnote number two where Prophet Lut believed in Ibrahim salam's message and immigrated to his Lord. Now ask again, which one is easier? Of course, it is easier to clean up and lay bricks and give water to the pilgrims. However, consciously changing my belief and reprogramming my mind is far more difficult. Now that you know the ranking of a believer and a maintenance person, it is time to find out Prophet Ibrahim salam's standing or position in the house of God, his maqam. What is the standing of Ibrahim in the house of God? Chapter 3, 
Al Imran 96 and 97. Indeed, the first house established for mankind is that with Bakka, blessed and guidance for the wolves. Fihi ayatum bayinatum maqamu ibrahim. ومن دخله كان آمنا ولله على الناس هج البيت من استطاع إليه سبيلا ومن كفر فإن الله غني عن العالمين In it are signs, ayat, explaining irrefutable evident proofs are Ibrahim's place of standing and whoever enters that attains peace, and the people should perform pilgrimage of the house of Allah, those capable towards this way. But whoever rejects, then indeed Allah is exempt from the needs of the worlds. In other words, his rank or the standing position in the house are the signs clearly explained. And why Ibrahim salam was able to explain the signs? Because the knowledge he had acquired of our solar system while searching for God. Therefore, if anyone wants to witness the signs in the house of God, the person must reach his vantage point or his maqam. Otherwise, these signs are jumbled up, coded, hidden in plain sight. Can anyone explain the rituals in the forbidden mosque without the detailed knowledge of the gravity and the solar system? Perhaps someone can guess all of this. In that case, let's see how many guesses or flukes will be required to get it right. This is a list of resemblances or similarities between our solar system and the rituals in the house of God. For visually impaired friends, I'll read them out. The signs seen from Maqam Ibrahim. Point number one, the sun is in the center of the solar system. The Kaaba is in the center of the forbidden mosque. Point number two, the planets orbit the sun counterclockwise. People orbit the Kaaba counterclockwise. Point three, the planets orbit in an elliptical path. A pilgrim orbits in an elliptical path because of al hatain Point four, seven planets can be seen in the sky from the earth. Therefore, a pilgrim goes around the Kaaba seven times. Point five, the sun creates a gravity well or a valley around it. The Kaaba is in the center of a valley forming a gravity well. Point six, an electromagnetic field shields the Earth's atmosphere from the solar wind. To demonstrate that, we cover the left shoulder, which is always pointing to the Kaaba, symbol of the sun during Tawaf or bidding around it. Point seven, astronauts wear a special suit to enter the skies. We also wear a special suit called Ihram to enter Miqat, extended boundary outside the forbidden mosque. Point eight, our solar system is in a valley of our galaxy called the Milky Way. The forbidden mosque is in a valley of Mecca city. Point nine, our galaxy has a black hole. The Kaaba has Hajra Aswad, meaning the black stone. Point 10, the creation cannot be understood without the knowledge. Islam cannot be understood without the knowledge. The science seen from Maqam Ibrahim continued. Point 11, Basics of gravity assist are taught using an example of a stationary planet. 
The two hills named Safa and Marwa symbolizes the stationary planets. Point 12. In 2006, Pluto's status revoked because it failed to clear its orbit. A hill near Kaaba called Safa, meaning to be clear, is a symbolic planet. Point 13. Formation of the Earth. Bright glittering stone, flint, and pebble. In order, Marwa means bright glittering stone, flint, and pebble. Point 14. It takes seven laps to traverse eight planets in the solar system. Pilgrims must count seven laps between Safa and Marwa, not 3.5 orbits. Point 15. An object in the sky will turn after interaction with the gravity of a celestial body or planet. A pilgrim will turn after interaction with the gravity of the hills Safa and Marwa. Point 16. An object gains speed due to anti-clock direction around a moving planet. A pilgrim gains speed due to anti-clock direction of laps to symbolize the behavior of gravity around a moving planet. Point 17. An object gaining speed can be observed from the sun's perspective, not from the planet's perspective. This is the reason running area or the stretch is located closest to Kaaba, which is a symbol of the sun. Point 18. NASA and others used an example of a valley to explain gravity. Sa'i ritual between Safa and Marwa is performed in a valley between the hills Safa and Marwa. Point 19. Invisible valley gravity well of the sun deduced by the scientists which governs the orbit of the planets. Pilgrims orbit in the gravity well of the Kaaba simulating the motion of the planets in our solar system. Point 20. The sun and the stars were created due to gravity taking hold and rotating the cloud of dust and gas in the sky. Allah started the creation by rotating the sky, hence gravity is a primary fixture of the Kaaba and Safa and Marwa. The scholarly hypothesis is there was no one in and around the forbidden mosque when Ibrahim arrived. That means not only most of these signs were missing from the forbidden mosque, but also the recitation of the Arabic text statements generally known as signs, ayat, were missing. Then the question is, how did Ibrahim salam, receive the guidance from this house, which is what he was searching for? And it is the stated purpose of the house to guide all the worlds. This house made all the difference in what Ibrahim salam, was able to achieve in a lifetime. And now the latest and the greatest astronomy is in agreement with the rituals in the house of God the Kaaba. Why Ibrahim salam, believed Kaaba is the house of God? I would like to elaborate just the point number one to emphasize on its significance. It is a common knowledge in our age that the sun is in the center of our solar system. However, understanding this fact turned out to be a colossal task for the scientists at the time. BBC made a documentary called Wonders of the Solar System, and it has five episodes. In the episode titled Order Out of Chaos, physicist Professor Brian Cox ironically starts the show from a scene in the Great Mosque of Kairouan in Tunisia. And he beautifully explained how our ancestors thought the earth is at the center of the universe. And he goes on to add, and I quote, 
So it looks for all the world as if the Earth is at the center of the universe and the stars rotate around it. And that's, of course, what the ancients thought for thousands of years. And why not? Because it's obvious, but wrong, end quote. So thousands of years are needed just to understand the dot point number one. This is the reason Ibrahim concluded that the forbidden mosque and its rituals can only be set up by true God. It is not a job of any or many human beings. The house of God we believe in is the first, the most ancient, and its rituals are based on the ancient astronomical knowledge of the solar system. At the same time, these rituals stand true in the light of 21st century astronomical knowledge of the solar system. Because at any given time in the future, when people will rediscover this, the solar system again, the truth will not change and will remain the same. Therefore, it is fair to ask Professor Brian Cox. Can you explain where did the system of Kaaba come from and who delivered it to our ancestors, Ibrahim salam, Ismail salam, and Ishaq salam? And how come the references in the Quran and the rituals in the, of the, in the forbidden mosque predates all his ancestral knowledge. Chapter 16, An-Nahil 120. Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan qanita lillahi hanifa wa lam yaku min al-mushrikeen. Surely Ibrahim was a nation devout to Allah, unswervingly upright, and he joined not gods with Allah. No wonder Allah called Ibrahim a one-man nation because of his achievements in a single lifetime. This is equivalent to what a nation would achieve collectively in its lifetime. The question is, if only a couple of rituals and few statements from the Quran requires the intelligence of Isaac Newton, Albert Einstein, and NASA's knowledge base to explain them, how could anyone expect the ancient primitive people to understand these rituals? And I'm not talking about the people in the past thousand or two thousand years. I'm referring to the people before Greek and Egyptian civilizations at the time of Ibrahim In my next video, I'll answer that question and I'll also delve into the scholarly content and the history recorded by people, which happens to be the belief of the society I was born in. In other words, most of the beliefs of my ancestors I grew up believing. These references are arranged in the order of these slides in the presentation. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum.